well what I was saying yesterday about living the dream. <laughs> it's still good, but it's four degrees, freezing, well wrapped up with the gloves and everything. Misty, but there's blue sky above. But the trees look kind of cool. And the cows are out, so we're out. And we're waiting for that sun. Waiting for the sun to come up, warm us up. Because four degrees is not good cycling weather. But we'll take it. We'll take it, Deb's eh? Can't feel my hands from the wrist down. <laughs> Two numb plates of meat. Look at that though, eh? We'll take that. Four degrees, bring it on, I'll have a bit of that. So we're on another greenway, coming out of Biha. Uh, awesome. Just seen some views down onto the motorway. Magic piece of engineering through these cuttings. Ah, oh, and the tunnel, the tunnel turns the full 180 degrees under the town of Biha. What about that? Love it. Absolutely love it. Buzzing. Hey, all right, Debs? There's the tunnel. Tom. No, Tom. You can do it, Bryony. Get it open. today and tunnels and railways everywhere you go there seems to be a viaduct or a bridge that railway it does look like a cool journey like really cool in and out of the curves in and out of tunnels around the reservoir I'll have to look that one up and maybe do that one day it looks really cool but uh, another blistering October day only seven this morning when we got up so straight into shorts and shirt and here we are climbing again and what we're coming down to next is the cheese museum especially for Pete Blood the cheese museum of Spain so we'll report back on that one oh, plan B that wonderful road we were on shut for roadworks they sent us on a I don't know 20 mile diversion fuck that so we looked at the map and we reckon we can get across on these uh, tracks and not only that it takes us to the cheese museum so it's going to be a challenge but the cheese museum might still be on but for now keep your fingers crossed that these tracks don't come to a dead end in the middle of this bloody prairie look at it do not want to get stuck out here the water's running out so there in the distance is the diversion they sent us on wrong direction get massive hills and this is what we're on there's the road with the road works in the distance and we're doing a bit of off-roading well i ain't counting my chickens till i'm out of here but this is looking promising we've come off that road there we're turning left sharp right and i reckon that's our track heading off into the distance there's a few people around the roads are looking good i reckon 
As I say, I ain't counting no chickens, but things are looking all right. From a moment of despair, things are looking brighter and brighter. We've got ourselves on this access road for the railway, except we're on the wrong side of it. Hopefully, half a mile, a mile or so, there's a, a way we can get across for a drain or something, but let's go. So we're off the big track and the big railway, and we're on this little track and little railway to cross. Got another railway to get over. I'm hoping this track will lead us to some kind of cattle creep or level crossing, but who knows? It looks fairly well used, and I think there might even be a mountain bike track, which is always a good sign. Yeah, this is looking good. A big left turn. Come on. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby, we win our steps. And it's the bloody road. We've only gone and done it. And not only that, the construction workers blocking the road at the other end. We've come out exactly the same spot to block them here. Chances of that. Oh, I'll tell you what, that saves us a massive, massive round trip. Some massive elves. Proper and lucky. Hola. Hola. Super. No, so Debs. Turns out it's a bloody cycle race that holds us up, not roadworks. I reckon we're going as fast as he is. Museo del Queso wasn't to be. We made it across the desert, in, beat the diversion, but the cycle race closed the road and now it's shut. What a bugger. In the roundabout. I'll get you, Penelope Pitstop. Off the line. Off the line. <laughs> please, Tom, please. Well, I thought it was a bit funny, but Debs didn't. Anyway, got all these lovely vintage olive trees. Still going, interspersed with new ones. Fantastic, look at those. Ill Debs, just ridden up it, cleaned it, what do you reckon? Oh, so easy, so easy, not, especially when this car's passing, but yeah, please, please that did it. High five. <laughs> Treated ourselves last night with a stay at the Hotel Las Palomeras. The outside doesn't do it justice, it's absolutely beautiful cool. inside. And it's in this lovely square. Yeah. Buenos dias. I tell you, it's amazing what a night in a normal bed can do for you. Stopped last night in Zafra in a little hotel. 35 quid for a bed and breakfast. In fact, 30 quid, I think. Amazing. And I uh, feel so refreshed today. Top of the world. Sun's shining. The vines are growing. And we're on the way to Seville. Oh, it's the best life, Debs, eh? 
Very blessed. Lucky couple. Lucky couple. We bloody know it and all. Thank you. Thank you, Finkle Finger of Fate. We know and we love it. Shit. Tom's going for it. Oh my God. Oh, he's an angel. Well, he's got so far. Well done, Tom. He's the man. Critical part push. Oh, God. Three, two, one. You're the star. Teamwork. <laughs> Not sure about that. Mission accomplished. One bog overcome. When Camino again, it's giving us a great set of steps. There's a very slight ramp on the edge, but the trouble is, if you fall off, you're going down a very steep concrete slope. We've got mine up, so the hard one's done. Now for Deb's bike. I don't know, 10 meter climb. Up some crazy steps underneath a motorway bridge. Oh, Camino. Teamwork. Definitely. <laughs> so we've just climbed the steps and now we're faced with the precipice walk. Beautiful. This bit's really slippy, this first 20 foot. Really slippy. This is Eurovella 1 as well, you know, eh? Oh, sugar. Oh. Oh, well done, Tom. It's just like being on ball bearings and you're just slipping down the bank. All right, High Tom. Fives. High five. All right, it's five o'clock. So the hunt for a wild camp spot begins. Normally we don't start looking till about six. Get dark at the minute, about half seven. Eight o'clock, it's pretty dark. So uh, normally we set up about seven, but uh, tonight we're knackered. So we're just gonna look for somewhere to camp as soon as possible. Uh, we'll see what we find. It's all a bit fenced off at the minute. A bit fenced off from what I call farmy. All land in cultivation. We like to find places where we don't have to go through a gate or over a fence. Just a bit of open land, you know. But uh, something will turn up. It always does. We've never been stuck yet. We'll keep going. Still all a bit fenced off, but uh, sheep grazing. I mean, there's a spot, but full of thistles. And it's a deer run or something. But that's the kind of bit of land we're looking for. Nice bit of unused land. But that's Punctureville, Arizona. That is full of thistles. And uh, if we put the bikes there, we're pretty much going to get a puncture, so... And it might pierce the tent, which we don't want, so we'll keep looking. Sometimes you can be riding for half an hour, an hour even, looking for a spot. But you've got to keep the faith. You start thinking, how am I going to find anywhere? But uh, somewhere always turns up. Nothing yet. And we've kind of lost the view a bit. It's nice to get somewhere with a bit of a view and all. Especially if you're camping early. Somewhere to chill out and admire the view. Um, we don't bother about hiding away, like, because we feel that if we find a spot, it's fair to pair enough to camp there because we think it looks all right. Some people like to stealth camp and hide the tent away behind trees and that, but we ain't fussed about that. We feel if you shouldn't be there, you shouldn't be there, do you know what I mean? No point hiding if you shouldn't be there. But keep the faith, keep on looking. Yep. See, there's another good spot 
just at the junction of them two tracks but uh, grass is a bit long and no real view so I think we keep going things are looking up oh yeah look at this some great spots in there see the fences have disappeared you see so they don't go on forever there's some nice spots in there oh what about them Debs bit of a ditch to get across so let's look for a spot where we can get over see another tip leave the main track go off up these side tracks that are less used and uh, you can just get a couple of hundred meters away from the main track uh, not that we've seen a car in like an hour or even a person but uh, so we're going to make our way up there under jazz or so and try and find a spot in amongst them trees so we've only come about 50 yards but we reckon over there in amongst the trees will be good the only thing you've got to watch out for around here are these little buggers where are they little thistles just got thorns to give you a slow puncture so we'll make a way gingerly across here lovely spot that this will do us got a treat for to lean Debs's bike against Jobs are good. Un. Let's set up camp. I five dubs. <sighs> Tidy. <Tied high. laughs> so that's how we build our house most nights. There it is. Perfect, I reckon. Wild well camp spot. A bit dry. We won't be having a cook up tonight. It's just two tins of dry. And then we'll have a little peek inside. There we are. Look, Debs has got it all set up nice. Yep, so when the tent's up, Tom passes me in the bags and everything has its place. So the hold all bags, they go one at either side to stop our airbeds moving about. Tom's big rucksacks uh, panniers come here our handlebar bags go either side and Tom gets the electric box there which I take out of one of my bags and now it's chore time I'm going to check all the inner tubes that I've patched and Tom's hopefully going to make me some tea <music>